Coming up this weekend in the flyweight division, we have the scariest woman who's five foot one you're ever going to see in your entire life, Jessica Andrade, the third ranked women's flyweight in this very stocked division, continues to grow, taking on number 10, the uncrowned champ, the big time prospect. It is cold blooded Aaron Blanchfield, as always, one half year host into a Craig Allen Twitter and Instagram, and you can find Matt Allen, respective socials, Matt Allen FNP. And I know we're really excited about this fight. It was thrown together on short notice we put the full card video out there friday night saturday night across the wire on the prelims ufc 284 out is santos in is on drage on a week's notice at 125 so definitely adds a lot of intrigue to a fight 100%. where you had to think the winner of santos and blanchfield possible opportunity at either title shot or a fight with maybe Manoff Yoto, just due to the fact that valentina shevchenko she's already booked up with mexico's alexa grasso so now you look at this matchup three versus ten and for Andrage, i mean it's it's like that old ozzy osbourne song Flying high again! Like, she's really taken off. She's won three fights in a row. I bet people didn't know I was going to quote that one. But wins over Cynthia Calvillo, Amanda Lemos, and Lauren Murphy. And the last main event slot for Jessica Andrade, that fight against Lemos, where a lot of people were kind of wondering. Lemos was on a streak of her own. And then, look at that. I mean, we're talking a standing, tricky, tricky submission for Jessica Andrade. Similar to what Blanchfield was able to do two fights ago against J.J. Aldrich, albeit that Amanda Lemos, J.J. Aldrich, maybe not on the same scale of fighter. But no. when you look at this matchup, Matt, I know you're really excited about this one, and probably more so than the fight with Santos. Oh, without a doubt. I genuinely think Jessica Andrade, pound for pound, is one of, if not the greatest women's fighter of all time. Like, it's Amanda Nunes. You have to respect Ronda Rousey, what she did Chris in this Cyborg. Chris Cyborg, of course. And then... Jessica Andrade might not have kind of the prime or the highest highs that some of them have, but when you talk about longevity and true lasting power in a division, she's been top five in three separate divisions. Really the only three women's divisions, and let's be honest, she's probably one of the top five 145ers in the UFC too. I just really respect Jessica Andrade and what she's able to do in the cage because she stays true to herself, which you normally wouldn't recommend when a fighter fights as aggressive as someone like Jessica Andrade because when people go out there and throw hammers with their chin up in the air, normally that's looked at as a massive nag. Negative. But in the flyweight division for the women's and in the strawweight division for the women's, there's not a lot of one-punch murderous punchers out there. So when you go in there with that mindset of, hey, I'm going to eat your power shots to deliver my own, nobody in either one of these weight classes can deliver the same levels of power that Andrade is able to do when she is able to get on the inside and really flurry well to the body and to the head. Now, we have seen her struggle with some of the rangier strikers in the past. The Ioana fight is always one that stands out to me because it was a lot of Andrade rushing forward, Ioana using her footwork more than using her close range attack and really just being able to outthink Andrade. But that's the problem. Andrade on the feet has really only struggled with the greatest strikers, at least technically, on the feet. Like Rose Namajunas, she struggled with a little bit. But even if you go back and look at their two fights, yes, she gets dropped by Rose early on in their first matchup. But she also looks really good later on in the second one that she ends up losing. And with Andrade too, she's not someone who can really just get held down for long periods of time. And I think that's going to be a really important factor for Blanchfield in this fight. We talked about this a lot at the start of the week about how Blanchfield, especially early in her career, was showing a lot more of her striking. But now that she is fighting more upper echelon fighters. She's going to go to what got her to the dance, and her X factor definitely is the grappling. I just don't know if she's going to be able to hold Andrade down, A, and B, I don't mean this with any disrespect, but what the f*** is Aaron Blanchfield going to do on the outside with Jessica so, Andrade? I really think she's going to have to use her kicks, but they're not that fast. I think it's going to be tougher to set them up from the outside. Yeah, and with Aaron Blanchfield, you kind of really did nail it on the head, and I don't know if we covered this enough when we talked about the Santos fight, and for a lot of people that are listening, they're going to say, guys, don't talk about it, but when we previewed the fight that Santos is going to have against Blanchfield, spoiler alert, we both picked Tyler Santos, and for me, it was Santos' ability to go in, cover range, get right back out, pop the 1-2 out there, mix in the power combinations, in and out, good in the clinch, and then she could really initiate some decent, uh, you know, defensive grappling. We saw it against Mara Romero Barella the last time that Santos struggled with some of the grappling, so but she's definitely gotten a lot better since that's happened. And for Jessica Andrade, you can kind of draw some parallels. I mean, you look at it, where was she getting submitted in her career? Well, the last time was in 2015 against Raquel Pennington at 135 pounds. So things have definitely changed for her, and she's definitely been able to show up and show up with her own grappling. Now, again, the aggressiveness comes with the striking, 
And you're going to think I'm going to talk about Andrade, but with Aaron Blanchfield, let's go back and look at it a little bit. Because when she was over there with Invicta, she was really putting on a great show. Her only loss, a split decision loss to Tracy Cortez. I'll say it today. I said it a month ago. I said it a year ago. I thought that she won that Tracy Cortez fight. However, we get to see her hands a little bit more. But it really was, out of the orthodox stance, that lead leg, getting it up there, and clapping the ear of her opponents. And she had great success with that in a lot of her fights. Now, the Leonardo fight... She hit her hard with it in the first round. She drops her and finishes her with it in the second round. She continued that role as she got into the UFC. But if you go and you look at the fights that she has had in the UFC, and this is for Aaron Blanchfield, she beats Sarah Alpar, takes her down, lands a lot of good strikes, controls her. Completely outgrappled Miranda Maverick. And if anybody was going to outgrapple Miranda Maverick, I mean, I guess it would be Blanchfield, but you didn't really, you know... And the amount of respect that people had for Maverick at, in her career, especially at that point, like, yeah. she was looked at as, like, the heir apparent to the throne. So, almost. a great job there. She fights J.J. Aldrich. She submits her in the second round, and we glance over a lot just saying that. And then in her fight against Molly McCann, it's one hitter, Smash quitter. Match. We're done with the jiu-jitsu. The only fight where we've seen a lot of resistance for Blanchfield in the UFC is the fight against J.J. Aldrich. First round, Aldrich on the outside. She's utilizing all... All of her tricky techniques, her really good striking, boxing, I should say. And then if you look at it, she was able to get a couple of takedowns. She was able to thwart the takedown and then ultimately gets caught up in the clinch, up against the cage, gets caught in that really tight, tricky submission attempt. And that really is the calling card for Aaron Blanchfield. You know her jiu-jitsu out of Henzo Gracie's in New York. She's been kind of cross-training at different gyms as the career's gone on. Be interesting to see if we get to see a little bit more striking out of Aaron Blanchfield. And doubly, when you look at this matchup, obviously, Andrade is taking this fight on a week's notice. It's a five-round fight. Her last one against Lauren Murphy was just three. But for Blanchfield and Santos, when it was announced that that was going to be a main event, the poster didn't even come out until, what, like the Friday before, yeah. I think? And it was a really, really wonky-looking poster, if I could add that. But Blanchfield Santos was supposed to be three rounds on a few weeks' notice. It was announced that that's going to be the main event of the evening. So both of these women, in a way, taking a short notice fight. We know that it is more short, no short notice for Andrade, but vice versa. I mean, for Andrade, she's had title fights, she's had main and events. She's taken fights on short notice before too. That's the important yeah. thing. Like this isn't the first time Andrade hasn't had a full training camp and is now expected to fight one of the best fighters in the world. Like I'm pretty sure going into the Calvillo fight, it was the exact same storyline of Hey, think about how. Good Good Calvillo could be, and we all saw what happened there. I just go back to, what have we ever seen Jessica Andrade struggle with? Fighting some of the all-time great fighters, and that's pretty much it. And like, Aaron Blanchfield could be that fighter. No, uh, she could be that fighter, she, Matt. Uh, she could be, but like, I could hit 23s in a row in an NBA game. I won't. It's just for Blanchfield, it's far too early to tell. Like, you brought it up a lot. If you struggle with J.J. Aldrich... I do struggle to see you going out there and looking great against the likes of a Manon Firo, a Talia Santos, a Jessica Andrade, and that's why I do pick Andrade in this matchup. But again, I look at this fight as very similar to the Santos fight, and I said this a lot. It was, hey, this could be the loss that is the best thing for your career, because if you beat an Andrade, if you beat a Santos, you're fighting Valentina next. That's a pretty difficult fight. I think we can all agree on that. Or Alexa Grasso, or the likes of a Manon Firo, which is really difficult fights after this we, one if she is able to win. We have a system to these videos. You've already given it up. You're just like a cheap... But when you look at this, Matt, we threw it out there to the YouTube wow, community so tab. 500 total votes, 63% going with Andrage out of the comments. Russ Godet's really looking forward to this one. Love them both, but Andrage is a beast. She's going to get the win. Uh, Orthodox Southpaw, hard pick for me. Hard to go against Andrage, but Blanchfield submitted McCann like it was nothing. Blanchfield is a grappling savage for sure. We'll go with one more. Christopher Gray, y'all crazy. Blanchfield's going to walk through this like a walk in the park. Severely underrated. Matt, when I do look at this fight... If you just have a look at the odds in this one, too, I mean, Andrade is a slight favorite. and She did open a minus 190. She's minus 140, so the odds are swaying Blanchfield's way. Blanchfield now plus 114. I look at this fight, and it was fun to watch it years ago, and then it was fun to reread it on the plane today in the fighter's mind. And Sam Sheridan did a whole chapter on Kenny Florian, and Kenny Florian's fight against the Muscle Shark. I see this fight going just like Kenny Florian's fight against the Muscle Shark. He's going to... He struggled with his jiu-jitsu off the back, there were bright lights. He struggled in that big time main event atmosphere. And that's what caused him to lose that fight. I see Aaron Blanchfield having a hard time getting openings with some of the jiu-jitsu. The wrestling offensively is great for Andrade. But for me, it's the striking X factor. It's the in and out, as you already mentioned. The work to the head and to the body. Andrade's going to throw the kitchen sink at you. And where I saw somebody like J.J. Aldrich, albeit she is a southpaw, but 
Aldrich had a lot of success boxing on the outside, backing away and circling away. That was the X factor for Aldrich until she got caught. For me, Andrade has those sliders turned all the way up. I agree with everything you said, but not for the reasons you said them. I don't think Andrade should ever back up in this fight, even for one step. If you back up, you give Blanchfield the chance to then get back into the fight with her own kicks. I'm just you saying, get rid of her Aldrich kicks, Aldrich had success no, no, with I a know, lot but, of the striking and the boxing, and even she had success in the back right. foot. Aldrich... Andrade does not fight like that. She's always oh, on yeah. the offense. And if she moves back, again, she's going to then let Blanchfield get one of her best uh, weapons back into the fight. If you crash the distance, think about Caitlyn Chukagin. Caitlyn Chukagin's great on the outside. Jessica Andrade went forward on her, hit her with one hook to the body, and that fight was pretty much over. So I, I just think Andrade, if she stays in the pocket and is very dedicated to that game plan, she has a great chance to win this fight. Last time out for Andrade, the scorecards. 30-25, 30-26, 30-25, round one significant strike, 61 Round two, 75. Round three, 95. She landed 231 significant strikes against Lauren Murphy. And listen, we know Lauren Murphy, Aaron Blanchfield, definitely different points in their career to this point. But really excited about this matchup, Matt. And again, a lot of good prospects featured on the card. It is a little bit watered down, and we have to admit it. When oh, when yeah. we, you got to call it when it's got to be called. I mean, you got a lot of contender series fights, a lot of fighters coming off of losses. This is one of the weaker cards that we're ever going to have this year. Next weekend, you have Krilov versus Span. That's an interesting fight in the light heavyweight division. But next weekend's more of the same. It's a lot of debuts, contender series, stuff that we can get really excited about. But overall, the MMA community, I mean. I mean, the folks that are coming off the UFC 284, Matt, like that was one of the biggest videos we've ever ha- had on the channel. That was top three too. of all of the videos that we've ever had on Fight Night Picks. So we want to thank you so much. But when it does come to the talent on some of these cards, yes, there's good prospects. But at the same time, you got to kind of pick on the UFC a little bit when it's due. Well, yeah, like if I went to an NBA game and just watched two benches play against each other the whole entire Low time, management. I'm still watching NBA talent, so I'm happy about it, but there's still levels to it, and, and that has to be said. And yeah, kind of like how load management allows you to rest your stars, the UFC doesn't always like to have their stars on these cards, so then, you know, they don't have to spend a lot of money on it. That's besides the point, though. This is a huge opportunity for Aaron Blanchfield, though, and I can't stress that enough. Like, she went from being in a very difficult fight where a lot of people saw her as the underdog to still being in that position, don't get me wrong, but it's against an opponent on short notice, who you are a lot bigger than, and that does have to be said. Like, yeah. Blanchfield's big for the division, and Andrade is not, and... It's a way bigger name, too. Like, if you beat Jessica Andrade, that does massive things for your career. If you beat Santos, it's a really good win. It's going to get you towards your goals in the sport. But in, you know, the general MMA world, people aren't necessarily going to put as much weight behind it as they will if she can go out there and beat someone like Andrade. So, a great opportunity for everybody featured on this card. Question mark kicks two hours before the prelims. There's no travel, so it's going to be a regular show for us. And I'm going to be here for the rest of the week. So, Matt, it is a big time card. Again, question mark kicks twitter and instagram at craig allen fmp at matt allen fmp at fight night picks make sure you're checking out some of that great content the likes are appreciated the subscribers that join the channel this week you folks are definitely awesome everybody out there thank you so much for tuning in keep it locked in with fight night picks we always say let's Let's get get into into it. it